Hi, I'm Bob Flynn from Palo Alto Networks. I'm a t technical training engineer here at Palo Alto Networks, and I want to talk to you today about how we use SSL certificates in secure web communication. So let's take an example of a user, Bob, trying to go to his online bank, Goliath Bank, to do his online banking. There are two things that Bob wants to make sure. He wants to make sure first that all of his communication when he talks to his bank is going to be secure. And the second thing he wants to make sure is that all the information that he sends is actually to the bank. So he wants to make sure that he can secure the identity of the bank and have security for his transaction. And those are the two things that the SSL certificate will provide for us is security and identification. So let's take a look at what information is contained on a certificate, on an SSL certificate. There's lots of information that's contained on there, and I want to kind of draw it out for you so you can see all the pieces. The certificate first contains information about the issuer of the certificate. The issuer of the certificate is either going to be trusted or untrusted. So as an example, if I go into my doctor's office and I see a diploma hanging on the wall, the diploma is basically a certificate of graduation. And if it's from Princeton or Harvard or something like that, I feel pretty confident that my doctor is a good doctor. If his, certi if his certificate is from Bob's online medical school and auto parts store, I probably don't have that same level of confidence in my doctor or in the certificate at that point. So if the issuer is trusted by the browser, then everything goes fine. If the issuer is not recognized, if it's from Bob's Auto Parts store and medical school, then the browser will put up a warning, a certificate warning that pops up. The next piece of information you're going to have is information about the uh, key issuer. You're also going to have validity dates from and to dates that the certificate is valid from. So certificates expire after a year or three years or things like that. If the issuer, the key, or the expiration date is not in line, then again you'll get certificate warnings. The next piece of information you're going to get is information about the subject. The subject information is who the certificate was issued to, what server it goes on, what the certificate can be used for, in our case, identity and encryption decryption. Then the next piece of information you're going to have is actually a public key. The public key is going to be used during the transfer of information during the SSL setup. We're going to walk through that step by step here in just a minute. And then the last piece of information is actually a signature. This signature is actually just a hash. And this, signa this signature hash represents all of the information contained on the certificate. If anything has been changed, for instance, the to or from dates, or the certificate is loaded on the wrong server, or somebody has tried to change the subject, then the hash will no longer match. And again, you'll get a certificate pop or a warning that there's something wrong. Now what I'd like to do is take a look at how all of this information is used during an SSL session setup. Far in it. You're okay. All right. So, when Bob wants to do his online banking, he opens his browser and goes to GoliathBank.com. As a secure connection, it's going to be HTTPS GoliathBank.com.
first thing Bob's going to do, or his browser is going to do, is say, hey, let's do SSL together. And Bob's browser is going to send three pieces of information to the, to the server at Goliath Bank. He's going to send the key algorithms he can support, the ciphers he can support, and a message hash to authenticate messages that are sent. He sends that to Goliath Bank. Goliath Bank chooses one of each from all, all of those three different categories and then sends his certificate and a public key. The certificate contains all the information we just talked about earlier, as well as a public key. And the public key is sent to Bob's browser. And Bob validates the information, or more specifically, his browser does. Checks the issuer, the validity dates, makes sure that this certificate actually belongs on that server, makes sure that the signature hash matches all the information and as long as everything is okay then what Bob's browser will do is he will send a session key that's encrypted within the public key that was sent by Goliath Bank and this session key is sent over the internet so that now both Goliath Bank and Bob's browser have the same session key and all the information is now sent using that key to encrypt and decrypt the traffic. So this is how SSL certificates are used in secure web communication. Thank you guys for listening and if you need any additional information please feel free to check out paloaltonetworks.com Wikipedia, YouTube has some great videos on this, and make sure you also check out all of our other great videos. Thank you very much.